Welcome to this week's edition of Mainly Motorsports as we're here down at John Peters Racing Headquarters, right? I mean, World Headquarters. Uh, World Headquarters over here in Westbrook, Maine. And uh, here with John's dad, Greg, which I'm going to tell you, as beautiful as all these race cars, and I'm telling you there was a beautiful one sitting right here five feet from me. As beautiful as all these race cars are on every year, still the most beautiful car ever to set foot on Beach Ridge in my eyes because it changed the way people looked at these race cars was your old, I think it was the Peking Gardens number yep. 09. Yeah. Dick's Auto Repair. Yeah. Painted it, did all the body work. Beautiful car Thank back you. in, what was it, the 80s? 1982. That was a long time ago. Long, that long car time still, ago. when I see pictures of that pop up on Facebook, yep. still say to myself, oh, I remember that. That was beautiful. Thanks. Thanks to Willie Davis. He <clears throat> actually showed me three or four pictures of that car that I never even had. So it's it's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's it kind of started we, that revolution. Yeah, you know? it did. It, it, the change and uh, and then you know I tell you, you know five years later, six years later, I think it was five years later, or four years later, Albert came out with a limited. Right. You know, and everybody always knew Albert is a frame. Yeah. And never really had nice looking stuff. His cars were just painted out in the back or wherever he lived with a brush and a roller and uh, and then they showed up and the one iconic thing was. That car was painted by Dick's Auto right. Body. We did that over there when I was working over there part time. Yep. Yeah. No. It, it's, Beautiful car. It's crazy. We're going to talk a little bit more later about Willie Davis, but all right. I'm going to talk about what's happening here. I mean, obviously getting geared up for 2020. A lot's changed in John Peters Motorsports Racing. John has a career now. He has a. I don't want to say he didn't have a life before, but he has real big boy life. Right. Uh, it's down what North Carolina. Yep, Morrisville. You know, working and. Uh, Make it a career for us. Got a great job, and um, his girlfriend Brooks got a great job at Duke University. Uh, I told him anyway, in another couple of years, they'll be flying him up on the corporate jet to race and won't <laughs> have to go coach anymore. But <laughs> that's just a joke we got going, but who knows? But he's he, he's got a good job, and it's a great place to work. And uh, the CEO of the company is a firm believer in the people make the company. No one quits. They uh, it, It's just an amazing place. And you're very fortunate to get in there. There were 200 applications to get in there. Yeah. And he got in. So that was pretty neat. The one cool thing is he had to give two presentations for the, for the guys that hired him. One was on owning and marketing and driving his own race car. And the other one was on some subject that they had given him. And my nephew, Stephen, actually works in the HR department. But he had no say. They didn't even know that him and John related. So if Steven said he was sitting in a debrief meeting for the hiring thing that they were going to do, and all they talked about was him owning his race car and his race team, and I said, see, that got you hired. One yeah. of the reasons why he got hired. Well, it's funny because I remember, um, and he didn't take the typical path. No. You guys raced go-karts. Right. Then John stepped away from the sport. Right. You know, he was that little kid in behind the flag stand waving his flags. Yeah. And, you know, you stepped away from the sport. You stayed involved with various opportunities right. with different people doing yeah. different things. But he stepped away. And then you guys decided, uh, you know, through the Thursday Thread the program at Beach Ridge, we're going to build a beetle bug, not knowing what to expect. Not really. But when you go out and you win a championship what, the first year and the amount of races that he win and the domination he showed, <clears throat> then you had to take it a little bit more serious. Like, you know what? Maybe it is time to spend a little money. Maybe it is time to spend a little time and see where this takes us. Right. That's what we did. You know, we, the, the Beetlebug thing was supposed to be a three-year program, and then that lasted one season, and then he decided on a legend car. Well, all right, I don't know anything about those things, but I guess I can learn. So we had bought a used car off Bobby Timmons and got that and ran it the last past 400 weekend, and he started last and finished 10th. So that, that was pretty good. That was a mission accomplished on that deal. And then we bought another car of Joe Means that he had and put that together and had, didn't really have high expectations. You know, yeah. it's, it's a tough competitive field with a lot of veterans. And to go out there and win seven tour races in one season was uh, way beyond what we yeah, expected. Yeah, no, the Beetle Bug thing was one thing. Right. Now we're going legend racing. And when I say you raced at the wrong time, I only say that because I was racing with Alicia, right. and it was the wrong time. You raced at the right time because you had Evan Bullia, yeah. top of his game. Bob Weymouth, top of his game. 
Reed Lampert yeah. at the top of his game. You know what I mean? You had guys that were ready to take that next step in motorsports. Right. You know, so, and you went toe to toe, head to head with them, and on many occasions beat them. So that had to. I know the beetle bug thing gave you like, wow, I think we can do this. The legend thing had to really make you step up and realize yeah. the boy's got talent. Yeah. He's got the drive and desire. Yeah. But then we made the step to the pro stock Super Late model. And was that an eye opening experience for well, everybody? Yeah. And the thing is with John, you know, I said, Hey, this is not gonna be easy. It's probably gonna take you five years to hit some sort of stride, whether you can do this or not. So I was very patient with the whole thing. Very competitive field. We were lucky enough to get the car, but it was an older car. I mean, it was a good car of Dave Oliver, but it's, it's the equipment that you need to go with it. You know what I mean? It's, you know, running a lot of this lightweight stuff now. So we knew it was gonna be an uphill battle the whole way. So even in his rookie year, made him take the tail end quite a few times just to learn from the other guys and was very patient with the whole team because most of the people that that work on this car had never worked on a Super yep. A model. So it was my job to A, stay grounded, and B, be patient with him and the rest of the team. And this was a process, a building year. Like when we got Runtel, we had, when he pitched the contract to them, he had asked them if they thought it was going to be more than a one year deal. And they said, well, why do you ask that? I, he said, well, A, it's going to depend where I go to school. But B, it'll depend on how long we're going to, you know, keep up this thing. Because if not for them, we would not be racing. And they were kind of impressed with it. I thought, well, it's kind of gutsy to say yeah, that no, for right. a 15-year-old kid. But it paid off. We've had them since 2014. So they're probably the biggest sponsor, obviously, that we have. And yeah, no, and it's, it's huge because, you know, nowadays they're not called sponsors. They're called marketing partners. Exactly. And, you know... And John is is at the forefront of marketing his partners. Right. You know, uh, with different videos he does, uh, always looks professional at the track. The team always looks professional. Um, portrays that image yep. that any sponsor would want to be involved in. Right. I mean, we try to do that. I mean, again, we're a small mom and pop team, but we understand that we're representing a company. I've always had good sponsors when I raced, and I called them partners, not sponsors, and took care of them at the end of the season to show the appreciation that we have because it takes a lot of people to, to, to fund these and make it work you know people on the outside we've got you know a few connections like with strange oval in north carolina or not technologies that we you know we we got some of their parts in here but it's a big group of people that you have to have not just the team and the crew and the equipment but all the people you surround yourself with, and he's oh, this, this he's always nice. done a good job of keeping his head inside his helmet. Because we've had a lot of days where we really didn't want to go to the track, and we've had other days that we couldn't wait to get there. Yep. No, absolutely. And uh, down here at the shop, we're going to take a break. We come back. I want to talk about the mom and pop shop. Because a lot of things has happened out of this shop. Oh, yeah. It's still happening. Oh, yeah. So we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with Greg Peters, crew chief on Son John Peters, Beautiful number 51 that I can see and you can. <laughs> I'm Melinda. My husband Steve and I operate eKeys for Cars in Saco. eKeys is family owned with over 20 years in the car key business. Need an extra key? We promise to provide the best quality at a good price. Walk ins are always welcome with no appointment ever needed. You'll be in and out in minutes. And yes, eKeys still handles emergencies. But why wait? eKeys for Cars. Route 1 on the Auto Mile in Saco. Well, welcome back to Mainly Motorsports as we are here in John Peters World Headquarters, which is what, a 24 by 24 garage? 24 by 26. 26. We got two extra feet. And, right. Uh, as you can see in the photos we're showing you, you know, trophies from years past. Not all of them John's. Some Greg's from his heyday. There you go. Um, a lot of cars have come out of this shop. I, I, mean, of, I think back in 1999, yeah. um, we built the Super Late model, went to race Oxford, Robbie Harrison, the driver, Perv, Spanky, Grimace, yep. yourself. Yep. Uh, you know, just good time coming over here a couple nights a week. Yep. And, and that's kind of a lost art of the sport, of a, a team coming to the shop and hanging out for a couple nights a week. But you've had a lot go on and come out of here, not only for you and John, 
but some others. Talk about some of the others that have you've helped out and, oh, man. and spearheaded successful seasons. Uh, Steve Benacasa, uh, obviously, uh, we had my nephew Gary's car here a little bit. We won the championship. Uh, Talking about Gary Babineau. Gary Babineau. Derek Nealon, when he ran his limited, we ran that first uh, past 400 weekend. Yeah. And I remember he had wrecked it the week before, and he was devastated. And I said, look, bring it to the shop. We'll get it fixed. And we did. Went out, finished second. And uh, that was huge. That that first year paid big money. So that was cool. Uh, there have just been uh, so many, you know, people that have tried to help, younger drivers and stuff. Uh, I mean, he built this in 1998. I went basically my whole career with somebody else's truck, somebody else's trailer, somebody else's shop. And when we finally bought this place here, I mean, I, I sold a race car to Gary Monugno to build this garage, put a furnace in, no more being cold in a warm time. A lot of people come in here and say, man, it's hot in here. I'm like, yep, it is, because we're not going to freeze anymore. But in 98, when I, when I built this, you know, and I had some help from Spanky, a whole bunch of other people to learn how to do setups and hang bodies or whatever. Decided to start doing my own stuff and did it right here. And honestly, that's when the trophies started showing up for me when the car was here. That way I could focus. I was like you, working in the mill. So I'd be out here three or four hours, go to work, come back, work on it some more, go mow the lawn. But once the car ended up being here, and I basically work on it by myself, and it wasn't because I didn't want anybody here. That's just the way I've always been. Well, and when you're working swing shift at the mill, yeah. you might be working here from 11 to 2 on the car. Exactly. How many other people are not working at that point? Right. You know, nowadays, I know things are different. Right. But, um, yeah, and, and you talk about cars. You know, I remember we won a championship in 1990, uh, I believe it was five, with Donnie Culprit. Right. You walked up, handed me a pile of cash, and we pushed it on your trailer, and you took it home. Yep, exactly. You know, went super sportsman racing. Yep. That's and then... Uh, I'm going to give you a memory, but you probably won't remember, but you might. I think it was the car you sold to Gary Minogno. Was it the Limited you bought off Billy Panette? That's right. Right? It was a Beatridge. I don't. Think, I think at the time it might have still been 75 laps, but 100 laps. So you were struggling in practice. You struggled uh, in the heat, and uh, you couldn't figure it out, and you all opened the trunk. We are parked next to each other, and Perv says, uh, what you, let's go over and try to help Greg. So we go over, and we see you, and you're looking in the trunk, and what do you think? And... I said, you know, if it was me, what I'd do, I said, I'd take the, the leaf springs and I'd switch them. And uh, you would? I said, yeah. I said, that one looks like it's a little s sagging more than the other one. I had no reasoning. And uh, so you did it. You went forward that night. And uh, you came back. You finished top five after start and tail end. And you're like, you thought I was a genius. Right. Perv, to this day, if Perv was still alive, he would laugh about that night. Oh, yeah, he would. He would say... What did you What did you see? I want. I see nothing. I just wanted to give him something to do, and it worked. But I want to take another night. It was back in 1994. Okay, remember when I got in my super sports? Yeah, car? yeah. I didn't have a clue how to drive. Yeah. The first night I drove it from the back to the front. We come up front. I wrecked in the. the, the everybody got jumbled up. I went airborne off the corner. Come in the pits. Come to the pad. Now we showed up with two guys: Mark Poitras, Steve Purvis, that, as a crew. Right. But you know. Things are going bad. Everybody shows up. Here oh, yeah. comes you. Here comes everybody running. What's up? What's up? I said, I think I got a broken shock. So you lifted the trunk. No, nope, everything's there. The shocks are there. And you you got to go. You got to go. I go, no, I'm telling you, I got a broken shock. So you went back to the trunk and you pushed on the car. And it went ba boing, ba boing, ba boing, ba boing. You look back in. Shock was a mount. The, the, the mount was broke off the cage. So the shock was just a spring. Right. Yep. And I'll never forget that night. With Perv and all of you guys, like, so amazed that I knew, because I don't know anything about these. Right. But, uh, so it's such a small world of bought a car from me. I helped you one yep. night, not knowing I was helping you. You helped yep. me that night. It's yep. just, it, it's, so you talk about this little shop that has done so much for people. You've done a lot for people at the racetracks. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know when to keep my, my, either my mouth shut or my <laughs> hands off something. But, like, you know, when I, I got hooked up with Cody Webster there, year before last, they were really struggling and Jason called me and we weren't, you know, we're on a part-time schedule and Cody and John go way back when they raced into a go-kart yep. together. Oh, yeah. And he so reminds me of John. He is very laid hands back, hands-on, good communicator in the car. And it kind of fell back on them. They were ready to like pack it in and went up there and put a setup in the car that we basically won the championship with in 
2007 or 2008, whatever it was. Gary, yep. And went out the first night and won the Eaton, finished second in the feature, and so continued on the rest of the season and uh, ended up second in points, which was huge. Yeah. And had a great time and a great family. We had a lot of laughs, and uh, it, it was just uh, like a Cinderella story. Almost won the championship. That's so. the key in this is having a great time. Yeah. That That's the key. Yeah. And what leads me to my next piece, Willie Davis. Longtime fan of racing, sits way on the top at Beechridge, travels to a few other races during the year. Kind of a quiet guy. I know Facebook's make, made him look a little bit right. more outward going than he right. is, but that's not him. No. And uh, But he's loving the history of the sport, and he's been building this um, replica Jim Brown car. Right. And you've played a huge role in that. It's been in this shop. Right. You know, how much fun has that been, though? It's been a lot of fun. Actually, I, I really didn't know Willie from Adam a year ago and uh, or two years ago and John and I were over at Beechridge <clears throat> excuse me watching practice and we're just sitting down front on Saturday then we're gonna boot and go to Oxford so halfway to Oxford John says hey check this out there's a picture of me and John on Facebook and Willie's like who are these guys now there was only us two and him in the yep. stands yep so when I finally did meet him, I'm like, Willie, why didn't you come down and introduce yourself, man? He's like, well, I don't want to bother you guys. I thought you were busy. I'm like, we weren't doing anything. So I, I you know, he's, he's a very laid back. As you interviewed him, yep. you found out. His lifelong dream, and, and I mean, I had that. You had that when you were a kid. You're sitting in the stands you're going, someday, maybe I'll have one of these someday. It took him 50 years to get one. He originally wanted to get a sports series car, and I quickly talked him out of that. And go racing? And go racing with somebody, oh, okay. with somebody else driving. Oh, okay. Whew. Okay, no, not him. No, we don't want to stop being a rookie at 50. No, no, he can't even drive this thing. He's got a bad knee, and he has no desire to drive, really, but it was to be an owner. Him and his brother used to race at Wiscasset. Years ago, yeah. Years ago. And so I said, well, why don't you look at getting a vintage-type car, because you can take it here, take it there, and... You can race it if you run with Wicked Good or whatever you want to do. The original plan was to do my Monte Carlo, and we couldn't because the year cut off is in 1979. That's that's the the newest you can do. All right, so we find a chassis that Curtis Gleason had and got that, and then it's the most, uh, you know, he posts 500 pictures on Facebook, so it's the most popular vintage build probably in New England. I don't know. Yeah. But... So we, we got together, and the idea was for me to teach him as well as help him on it. So we spent a lot of time putting the, you know, the, the to get it rolling. And this was supposed to be a, I don't know, five-year plan. And here we are six months into it, and we're probably 50% there already. Will he have it ready for Summerfest, you think? Yeah, it'll be ready for that. Whether it has a motor or not is is the question. He doesn't want to put a crate. He wants to put a built motor because he wants to keep the era, which is what we ran back yep, then. Yep, understandable. And we got to be a little bit careful of putting too much fluff on it. You know, we have all the pictures, and Mitch has been here, and Jim has been here, so we want to copy. You know, uh, I mean, it's, is, you what know, was it like the day Jim Brown came in and Mitch to see? You know, the body was hanging on. Yeah. You know, I mean, they. Jim Brown wanted to get in it, and he said, "If I get in, I might not want to get out." No, so that's... just that right there, and Mitch has been a really huge help to Willie on, on giving him stuff and guiding him through, you know, and then me, I mean, he's not skimming on what we're putting for parts in the car. It's going to be safe, and it's good equipment on it, stuff. Be an older chassis, it's irrelevant. It's pretty much a brand new race car underneath it, and, and that's what he wants to do. Uh, he wants to get it powder coated, and he wants to do it right. So. Again, this was supposed to be a three or four year project, and he's like, uh, he's on cloud nine right now because, you know, like I said, I mean, we sat in the stands, oh man, I want to be that guy, I want to have a car, and we kind of take it for granted, okay, because we've been doing this for so long, but to take a guy in his position who's been waiting 50 years to own a race car, be it a yep. vintage or whatever, it doesn't matter. So it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I didn't really like hanging a metal body again. Cause that's a challenge and I went through a box of band-aids yeah but he was here through the whole process and so it, it's actually been like a stress reliever for me 
just to get on something that's, you know, and like I said, having Mitch and Jim here just gave us the thumbs up and they really no, enjoyed this. Honest. That, that's, that's been it the best. It was great. And yeah. Can't wait to see the finished product. Yeah. You know, so we're going to take a break. We come back. I want to talk about this beauty sitting right in front of us. All right. And uh, what the plans are for 2020. Sounds good. Don't deal with just anybody to seal coat your driveway or business this season. Call Black Magic. They bring over 20 years of experience in seal coating and crack filling. Black Magic's skilled team makes sure the job is always done right. On schedule with quality workmanship at a fair price. Protect your investment in your driveway by getting it sealed with Black Magic. Ooh, Black Magic. My name is Scott. This is Devin. We're the owners of Black Magic Seal Coating. Let us earn your business today. You'll be glad you did. Football fans, have we got a deal for you. VIP Tour and Charter Bus Company is offering round-trip transportation to Gillette Stadium to watch the New England Patriots make another run for the Super Bowl. Ride in style knowing we're doing the driving. So if you've got a ticket, we've got your ride. It doesn't get any better than that. Just log on to VIPChartercoaches.com, click on the Browse Book Tour button, and book your trip today. It's that simple. Relax and leave the driving to us, and we'll leave the tailgating to you. For a trusted name in residential and commercial site work in the Southern Main area, call Peter Pettit Excavating. We can handle everything from the complete house lot to those nasty water and sewer line repairs. Septic systems are another area that we specialize in. During the snow season, Pettit Excavating has the equipment to handle any size job. And when the race season arrives, be sure to follow the number 7 Hewitt's Family Restaurant Chevrolet on the past Super Late Model Tour. Call 207-282-9305 to get the job done right. That's Peter Pettit Excavating. Welcome back to Mainly Motorsports, and you guys are going to have to come to the Northeast Motorsports Expo if you want to see the rest of what's sitting here, because this thing, absolutely amazing. John Peters, he's got to be excited. I know he hasn't seen it up close and personal. He hasn't. He's only seen he's... parts of it on Facebook Live. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this great job by you guys as a whole. But because of the job, because of living in North Carolina, you can't just pack up and go racing every weekend. So what are the plans for 2020? Uh, right now, I think the first race we're going to do will be the Easter Bunny 150 at Hickory. Uh, something that I've kind of wanted to do with him. Oh, a, and obviously, he's not that far away, but yeah. we are. And we'll probably forego the first Oxford Pass race. But it's just another bucket list thing. Because, I, you know, I really don't know how long he's going to want to do this. But, you know, his girlfriend has been very supportive of him racing up here and obviously we're excited to go to Beatrice to run the Grand State race. Yeah. That'll be cool. And then he hasn't quite come up with the rest of it yet. Obviously we're gonna try the two fifty again. Uh, Achilles heel. Achilles heel three uh, times uh you know the first time yeah I don't know if you were ready. You right, know what I mean? Right. You were gonna you were gonna need luck to get in that yep, race. Yep. The second and third time you, you didn't need luck. You had a car good enough to get in that race. Yep. You didn't need the bad luck that keeps yep. parlaying its way into your day. I mean, even with the bad draw, we've raced with pass enough, and I knew we had a decent car. I wasn't a basket case like I would have been three years ago. Very comfortable, the whole thing. Well, two laps into it, he's already sitting sixth. We need one spot, or seventh, whatever it was. And I said, dude, you just need one spot. we got 18 laps to go. And then there's always one, and it happened yeah. again. Yeah. And could the car have been fixed? Probably. A lot of people offered stuff. But I'm a realist with this, and I'm not going to go on the cons and start last, get wrecked again. Oh, yeah. Okay, we were fortunate that you know we have plenty of tires left over. Bob Guptill sponsors us with the fuel. We still had that, so we looked at the next race. He was devastated, but like I told him now that he lives down south, I cherish the time that I get to spend with him. No, it's it's. So it's not. Sometimes at the end of the day, we step back and we're like, you know what? This wasn't a bad day. No. And we're not bringing the trophy home. No. We got a little bit of the torn up race car. Yeah. But it wasn't a bad day. But it didn't bend the clip or anything else. You know, I mean, uh, one of the guys got a bent clip out of it. So I sat on the ramp, and me and Tommy Rowe were having a great old time, laughing and joking. That's how, yeah, that's my different mode now. Yeah. Because, again, like I said. Ten years ago, you'd have been running down and oh, yeah. chasing somebody. And yeah. Gail would have been hanging at your feet. Yeah. And John no. would have been over there mortified. Yeah. And, no, you know. it's just I have to treat it like another race. And, sooner, and like I said, we had a good car all weekend, and that's what I told him. I said, look, we had good speed. You deserve to be in there. You had a good enough car to get in there. I don't want a provisional to get in. I want to race my way in. So, you know, and then we go up to the last one they had and finished third in the heat behind 
the 250 winner, Nick Sweet Nuss, started fourth, had a little bit of a trouble with the front end, 60 laps in, but still salvaged a decent finish. And based on the people that we run with, based on the operation that we have here, I'm, I'm, I, I want a top three with this thing so bad with bass. Oh yeah, no, but that's that's a that, that's a that's you, a win. You've got to be real. Yeah, even a top ten run for us is good, and and I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? So we have a different outlook on that, and it's a lot more fun. We've enjoyed. He was hesitant about giving up weekly racing. This is before he got his job. Yep. But now he loves it. And he's a better driver. And we have a lot more fun. Everybody has time off. And everybody gets excited to go. That's kind of like my wheelhouse, is to do this tour stuff. So it all works out. Sponsors. You couldn't do it. You mentioned Rental. You mentioned yep. Turn 4 Automotive. Yep. You, you got... Digby's has been with you for how long? I don't know, 25 years, I guess. As long as I've been racing, we've had Matt. He does a great job. And Mike Libby, uh, Libby Septic, that's his trailer that we use. Good friend of ours. And, uh, again, Runtho and all these all these people that help. There's, there's a lot of people on the sidelines. Like, I mean, i got to give a shout-out to Dale Averill. He got this design done in, like, three or four days because this was always, a, you know, this project was a get it over there. Uh, Warren, obviously, for the great install, and I got to give a shout out to Robbie Harrison. He did a great job putting this body on. Oh, it's it's. While I had Willie's car here doing the metal body, he was over there. I would go over and help him, but the whole idea was to just get this done, and it was a lot of hours and a lot of early mornings out here working on this. But we wanted to do the show again. We enjoy doing that, and you know, there's just a lot of other people in the background that help us out. But we could not do this, as anybody in racing should know. And please, you guys on Facebook, don't just post that you're looking for somebody to sponsor you. There's a way to do it and a way not to do oh, it. Yeah. And you have to promote yourself. You have to have a bio of what you're doing. People aren't just going to go, who's this guy? He wants money. It's not how it works, fellas. Marketing it's not how partners. it works. Marketing partners. We're in this together. We win together, we lose exactly. together. Exactly. It's critical. No, absolutely. We're going to take a break. We come back. I know you went down last year the Snowball Derby. We went down this year. Obviously, it rained again. It rained again. Uh, you know, we missed the Derby, but uh, Speed 51, Bob Dillner, Brandon Paul, great group for us to work with. Uh, they sent us up some footage so we could show you some highlights of the event. Uh, we'll catch up with the winner, Travis Braden. It just, it's a, it's the 250 on steroids. It's oh, yeah. just a whole different animal. At the end of the day, they're both two very prestigious races that you've heard the likes of Bubba Pollard and those guys, they want to win them both. Yep. Um, once again, Bubba struggled at the Derby. That's his namesake. Yep. He struggled. So we take a break. We come back. We're going to have some snowball derby highlights, and then we'll be back later to talk with Greg, wrap this show up, talk about the Augusta show, and uh, get ready as it's just around the corner. You don't have to wait until the end of camping season to get your best price. Hi, I'm Scott from Scott's Recreation. We're starting our end of season sale now. We have over 300 campers in stock and every unit is on sale. Even the 2020s, up to $16,000 off travel trailers, up to $30,000 off fifth wheels and motorhomes, up to $40,000 off toy haulers. Ask about our bi-weekly payment program to save you even more money. Financing available, trades welcome. Scott's Recreation, Turner and Manchester, Maine. Our family has been in business since 1972. I'm Johnny Wolf. I personally drive and state inspect every vehicle we sell. 21st Century Motors now offers low rate credit union financing and first time buyer programs. We have a large selection of vehicles starting at $49.90. Quality vehicles and guaranteed repairs. Come see why more than 50% of our business is repeat or referral. Visit us today on Route 25 in Gorham, Maine or online at 21stCenturyMaine.com. From, From our, our family, family to your, your family. family. Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Scotch Recreation. Whether you're thinking about your first camper or looking to upgrade your current one, Scotch Recreation can help you. Get both our Route 202 Manchester and our Route 4 Turner locations and online at scotchrecreation.com. Bentley Saloon, Route 1 in Arundel. Stop by and see why me and my friends say, who has more fun than us? We do. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. The Snowball Derby presented by BJ's. And they head back down into turns one and two again here. Bob, a couple of Toyotas on that front road down the back straightaway. It gets tight there into turn three. 
Cole Butcher, I'm impressed. Impressed with how he is on the high side of the racetrack, but the tires still have the goodie on them, honestly. He tucks in behind the driver from California. Problem car in the wall, number four in turn one. Majeski out in front. Butcher's coming back, and he's carrying Thorne with him. It looks like Ty Majeski doesn't want to take my advice about lap 200. Who's superstitious? Not Ty Majeski. He's going to try to lead on lap 200. He's going to try to lead the final 107 laps here. That's what we've got left to go. As we watch a battle right now between Travis Braid and Giovanni Bramani up to the outside, they race for fourth and fifth. Casey Roderick from the rear of the field, he's up to sixth. He'll look down to the inside of Giovanni Romani for fifth. And remember the 26 of Braden, he had struggles at the first half of the race, two laps down, got the lucky dogs, came back on the lead lap. He's now fighting for this win here in the Snowball Derby. Win at Citrus County Speedway here in Florida. Ooh, three wide down the back straight away. Augie Grill up on the outside. This is back for 11th or so. That's a bottleneck of traffic. A storm brewing, if you will, here off the Gulf racing mode off of turns one and two. Oh, contact like this. Three wide out of turn number two. Down the back straightaway. More contact between Jeff Shaquette and Jeremy Dawes. Business picking up here with 198 laps completed. He passes both Caden Honeycutt and Jeremy Doss. Now Bubba Pollard in the 26. He's going to look down the inside of Doss, trying to take a spot away. That's for 13th. Race right now here for sixth. Giovanni Bramani in the car number 81, Steven Nassi in the 51, and his Jet Motorsports teammate, Jeff Shaquette. Figure this right now. The ruling is the last five laps of the Snowball Derby have to be run, uh, run under green flag. So right now it's five laps to go, uh, what I'm told from the officials, and Ty Majeski with a great restart there over Casey Roderick. A lot of times we see cars spin their tires on those restarts. Casey Roderick has had a terrible restart. Here comes Chiquette to the inside battling for second. This is exactly what Ty Majeski wanted to see. A little shove there by the number nine on the 22. The 22 of Roderick kind of scrapes that front stretch wall. Travis Braden in the 26. He qualified 30th. He's going three wide. Racing for second down the back straightaway. Oh, my. Look at that. Some hard-fought racing. Here comes Travis Braden. Travis Braden coming to the line now. Look at this. Wow, incredible. Contact. They made contact in turn one, both up the racetrack. Now Stephen Nassie, he started 36. He's going to make it three wide per second. Buckle up and hold on. Here comes Steven Nassi to the inside. Roderick goes crazy. Two laps to go. Ty Majeski has hidden from the field. This is the battle. Second on back. Nassi now oh gets no. the second Whoa. contact right there. Around goes Travis Braden. Wow. Around goes Braden. But what a shot right here. Getting set for a dramatic restart here. Will it be the final one? I'm not so sure of it right now. Ty Majeski trying to hold on to win the Snowball Derby. Can he do it? Here comes Steven Nassie, Casey Rotter, contact, oh, contact, contact. There is contact from the 22 of Casey Roderick to the 91 of Ty Majeski, and chaos ensues heading into turn number one. We will settle the score. Green, white, checker finish number two. Steven Nassie leads over Jake Garcia, and Nassie, Gets the jump he wants out into the lead here at the Snowball Derby. Can you imagine the celebration, Bob, if Steven Nassie wins this race? All the dejection after qualifying, and he is one lap away from a Snowball Derby win. Look at the battle just behind that for a second. Incredible battle right there. Cole Butcher right there as well. We go back to Steven Nassie. Steven Nassie, an unbelievable day. It'll be Classy Nassi, Steven Nassi, that wins the Snowball Derby in the 52nd edition of the event. Hi, I'm Sean Moody. We take pride in our facilities, and at Moody's, it's what's inside that matters. We believe it's more than just the exterior looking good, it's what's inside that matters. Restoring the structure of your vehicle the factory respects is critical to your safety. I'm proud of our Moody's co-worker owners who understand the importance of protecting your valuable asset. And we all know what our most valuable asset is. It's what's inside that matters. Welcome to LST Landscaping, where we've been providing complete landscape solutions to all of Southern Maine since 1969. We specialize in year-round landscape maintenance and snow services, including weekly lawn mowing, seasonal cleanups, sweeping, 
mulching, and so much more. Many more customizable services are available upon request. Please call our office today at 207-878-1578 or visit our website, lstlandscapinginc.com. Patman's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice-cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables, and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Patman himself. Just letting you know that Patman's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. Well, welcome back to Mainly Motorsports, and you just saw the highlights of what was a crazy last, I'd call it 15 laps of the Snowball Derby, and we're honored and privileged to welcome first-time guest, first-time Snowball Derby winner, Travis Braden to Mainly Motorsports, and Travis, welcome to Mainly Motorsports. Well, hey, it's an honor and a privilege to be uh, introduced here for the first time as uh, the Snowball Derby winner. I appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, and... Uh, you're two weeks removed, basically, from that race, and has it set in yet what you've accomplished in your young career by winning that race? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think definitely continues to, to set in, and, you know, it's not just what I accomplished in my career, but what, what our team and Team Platinum accomplished um, in just a few short years starting, you know, since we started working together. Um it's a very cool deal. You know, we, we originally finished second in the race, and, and it wasn't a single dry eye on our whole team just to do that. So uh, it was very special for us to, to even compete on a stage this big. And we, we had a roller coaster weekend, but we had a very stellar weekend. And to cap it off with, with, with the win and, and just such a strong finish, uh, racing side by side for those positions at the end. And, and, uh, just the whole circumstances. The way our season went was a roller coaster. The way the snowball derby went was a roller coaster, and it was a it was a emotional ride, but it was a happy emotional ride. And it's been cool to, to let it sink in for a week. And um, it was, it, I got to add to going to the PRI show the week after the derby as the derby champion and a derby champion team uh, was something special because you have everybody that you know in racing is there to congratulate you and just have a good time and and talk about the story and all the fun times no absolutely and that was my next question if anybody in short track racing world didn't know who travis braden and the 26 team was before the derby everybody knew who you were after the derby and that's that's got to be pretty cool to get text messages and calls from people that probably you would expect to hear from but I'm sure you heard from a lot of people that you didn't expect to hear from after winning the Derby. Yeah, and you know, sometimes it's just a matter of people that you've been around or that, that have been around, like like you said um, to me earlier before the before the show here. We, you know, we've never met, but we've been at a couple of events that at the same time. So um, now we're talking, and that's what's so, so cool about it is this race does mean a lot. And so it's uh, opened up some doors for my team and I going forward, and, and it's created some new relationships and friendships. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you, you take away, you're, you're, you're a young guy, but you sound like an old school racer because you you're talking about the team. We're not talking about a crew chief. We're not talking about a chassis builder. We're talking about a team. It's a group of individuals <laughs> yeah. that all came together, submerged on Pensacola, put their best foot forward, involved in a late race practice crash that could have ruined the weekend and could have really put sorrow faces on everybody but you guys dug in you put the car back together you got it into the you know you got it qualified through the time trials and then you set your sights on the race so it sounds like you got a very good strong group of individuals that are really a unified you know operation yeah well i mean it First of all, it's a team thing, and our, our team is probably one of the smaller teams that compete in the Derby. Um, pretty unconventional style program. You know, we don't we don't necessarily ever go into an event with uh, your your typical hierarchy, I guess you might call it, where you know one person's fully in charge, and I'm just there to drive, and this and that. You know, we we really do 
do it as a team. Um, the team's owned by by a, by a lady by the name of Mina Burba, and she doesn't know anything about a race car, but <laughs> she still can give input, you know, and and something she may not know, a uh, mathematical, um, you know, data point that she wants us to follow, but, but she may sit back and watch and say, hey, you guys need to, you guys need to focus on this for a second, you know, or, or you know, are you guys forgetting something? And that's what's, that's what's really cool. It's, it's kind of a family thing. Um, this, this team was started as a family, family endeavor to have some fun around their local racetracks in Ohio and surrounding areas. And, you know, we, we teamed up myself and team platinum in 2015. And, um, since then we've gone on to really, you know, really grow into a team capable of doing something like this. And, um, it is it's incredible that we were we were lucky enough to pull it off the first try yeah now take us through those last 15 laps you know on one of the restarts you you drove it in a little hot you know it kind of broke loose you had to chase it up the track kind of slowed a lot of people's momentums you know looked like you you know really had, had set tie a sail you know and then yeah. um but it's the derby and man it, it just at the end nobody wants to settle for second third fourth or fifth you know and and then that's what kept bringing on the cautions and you found yourself in put yourself in position to succeed um and you did and obviously tech played its role like it has many years uh you know with deciding the actual winner so but take us through those last 15 laps or so well it, it, again um our season and the entire snowball derby was a roller coaster so those last 15 were, were just that. Uh, we were we found ourselves in fifth place, which with like five laps to go, five green, five laps to go in the race. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Got a really good restart. And on the two to go lap, or three to go lap, I'm sorry, I found myself in second place, racing side by side. And I got into the turn one pretty, pretty aggressively, made a mistake actually. And, and found myself under pressure <clears throat> and the next lap the two to go lap i ended up getting spun which was partly my fault because i had made that mistake a lot prior so here we are we're in fifth and it looks like all of a sudden we're going to finish second which was huge and now we're wrecked and we're at the tail of the field and you think you know with two, with two laps to go two green flag laps to go you know what what can we really do now there's not much right um, so we take that restart, which ended up being a huge wreck where Ty Majeski got spun and, and the whole field pretty much wrecked. And we were starting 11th. Somehow, some way, magic happened and I uh, made it through the wreck. And the, the final restart, the ensuing restart, um, I restart fourth. And somehow the car just was just just free enough to be able to roll the outside on a couple of cars and make two passes and take the take the checker flag in second for the time being until we get to until we get to the, the room of doom the tech inspection afterwards yeah I and mean, you know what were you feeling i mean sitting there second you don't want to lose that in some technicality so were you pretty confident that you were good everything there was no no gray areas that somebody tried to push the envelope and you were good you just had to get ricky's seal of approval yeah, I knew we were good. Um, you know, we really don't play with a whole lot of things like that. And I, I really didn't expect anyone to have issues, to be honest with you. I didn't think that there was any any glaring signs that someone was, was doing anything outside the rules. Uh, it's a pretty controversial, you know, deal with the disqualification. And so, you know, it, it's, honestly, it's unfortunate that the race has that black eye on it. But, you know, it is it – is, part of the deal with that big of a race you know there's black and white rules and the history shows that that's just how they play it there it's black and white so you can't um you can't do that for 50 51 years and then decide the 52nd year to be different yeah nope. and so that, that's how it played out and uh it, it was really cool like i said we just finishing second was a phenomenal victory for our team and we celebrated after that race like it was a victory before we ever knew we actually won the race. No, that's that's incredible. And I, I just can't imagine what what this little team's feeling uh, over the last couple of weeks. And, 
you know, having won that race and, you know, if you weren't already on the map, you are now. Um, everybody knows who Travis Braden and Team Platinum are and that car number 26. And next year when you roll into the Snowball Derby, you will roll in as the defending winner. Every time they announce you, whether it's in driver introductions, your qualifying lap, practice speed, anything, up on the stage in, in, uh, at the bullring uh, room, you're going to be announced as the defending winner of the Snowball Derby. And, and, and tell me that don't sound good. It's, it sounds awesome, man. And, and not only does it, does it sound so cool and it feel, feels so great, but it's, it's something that um, it, it's cool to be able to, because that we are the reigning champions, you know, we, we have such a voice now. Um, you know, everyone wants to hear what we have to say, and our whole team, including myself, we just love short track racing. We love um, where it's going. You know, there's, there's a lot of growth right now, and it's a lot of fun. And so we love telling our story. We love telling the story of everything that's going on. And so it's just cool to be, you know, to be able to be given that sort of microphone, right? It's like people are giving you this opportunity to, to, to speak about it. And that's what we need, really. Well, Travis Braden, you put yourself on the big stage. So once again, congratulations from all of us here at Mainly Motorsports. Looking forward to catching up with you at a, at a future race, introducing myself, putting a face with everything. I think we're Facebook friends, but I think we're friends with everybody in the racing world. So uh, uh, congratulations to you, your entire team, all the sponsors, all the people that made this possible for you now to be able to call yourself and your team something they'll never take away from you, winner of the Snowball Derby. Oh man! I can't, I, again, I can't. I can't thank you enough, and um, hopefully we will. We'll do something big again here soon. And you guys give me a call, and I'll be happy to come back on sometime and talk some more. All right, perfect. That's Travis Braden, the winner of the 52nd annual Snowball Derby. I'm going to take a break, and we'll be right back here on Mainly Motorsports. You don't have to wait until the end of camping season to get your best price. Hi, I'm Scott from Scott's Recreation. We're starting our end of season sale now. We have over 300 campers in stock and every unit is on sale. Even the 2020s, up to $16,000 off travel trailers, up to $30,000 off fifth wheels and motorhomes, up to $40,000 off toy haulers. Ask about our bi-weekly payment program to save you even more money. Financing available, trades welcome. Scott's Recreation, Turner and Manchester, Maine. Mainly Motorsports, brought to you by Four Season Synthetic. See them for all your AMSOIL product needs. Moody's Collision Centers, now with seven convenient locations. Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, Portland, Sanford, Lewiston, and now South Portland. Visit us at moodyscollision.com. Welcome to Mainly Motorsports. To order a copy of this show, send a check or money order for $15, including shipping and handling to Mainly Motorsports. 2 Main Street, Suite 17-103, Benefit, Maine, 04005. And please add the show number in the description of the show. As we wrap up this week's episode of Mainly Motorsports, I can't thank Greg Peterson. And, and it's easy. It's a simple text. Hey, you want to go on the show? Sure. Absolutely. He's show ready. You know, they know they know, he's always on his on his game. Hey, even clean the shop. Even clean the shop, put a nice new shirt on, representing the team and the sponsors. And, uh. Man, we talk about 2020. Some of the big news you mentioned earlier, Granite State Pro Stock Series making their inaugural. It's their second ever main appearance, but their inaugural event at Beach Ridge. Been a lot of buzz, especially now that Beach Ridge is on the same American race with yep. tires that they are. So that ought to be a big deal. We are excited. No, I can imagine. There's a lot of people excited. Yep, yep. The mods. We went down last year, watched local homeboy, Tony Ricky, right. pick the win up, and, and you couldn't have scripted a better night. Now Andy's giving them the opportunity for a Triple Crown Series. Yep, that's awesome. So there's big things happening. Obviously, the Boss Hog, a race that you don't like to talk about because it, it almost ruined the race team. Yep. But in the end, it, it couldn't have worked out any better. It, you upgraded right. equipment from it. Exactly. Uh, took your race team to the next level. It did. Uh, but, you know, that's back this year with Cassett, the Coastal yep. 200. Is anybody going to stop Ben Ashline with his <laughs> domination up there? Um, yeah, was Cassett. Your Achilles heel, the 250. We're going to try it again. I mean, we're not going to quit. We're just going to keep pushing along, and one of these times it's going to happen. You know, I mean, we're going to make it happen. We've had a good car. It's not that we're down on speed, and that, that was the positive thing that I looked at was 
obviously spending time with John. Oh yeah. But like I said, we've raced enough with pass. I was even comfortable with a, with a bad draw, and it it just happened again. And one of these times, we're going to get it. There's no quit in this team. So. 2020. So a lot of big news happening. It all starts January 10th through the 12th at the Northeast Motorsports Expo. This beautiful, I'll tell you the number, 51, in case you didn't know, uh, will be on display. Obviously, John won't be up. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, you know, things could change. You, know, right. you could find a flight. But, uh, you know, you and Greg will be there representing the team. You Gail. Know, the, the, yeah. yeah, you and Greg, yeah. Greg and Gail will be there <laughs> representing. At least I didn't say you and uh, just throw another yeah, name out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that would have been good. Yeah, that would be good. You know, Gail will be looking for me. I'll be right. around with you. But, uh, no, it, it's great what you guys do for the sport and your sponsors. I appreciate uh, that, Steve. You know, John Peters Motorsports is a group that was founded seven, eight, six years ago. I don't know what it was. With a little beetle bug program over there at Beach Ridge at Thursday Thunder. Yep. And where you are now, one of the most respected uh super late model teams in the state of Maine because not only do what you do on the track but off the track Thanks. and that's a testament to the parenting of you and Gail to bring young John up and uh, now you've turned him loose and uh, he's just taking the world by the horns I guess he has so I hope you enjoyed this week's episode right here from John Peters Motorsports World Headquarters we're going to do this again I'm going to find somebody else I know there's people that would love to invite me over this is awesome yeah no it's a good time so, better than that uh, studio thing oh yeah that studio you know? thing I think it's old my uh, birthday is Monday too the 13th so y'all come up y'all come up so wish you guys the best of thank luck thank you very much thank you for all your support with us on Mainly Motorsports and the shows and we'll see you next time here on Mainly Motorsports hi I'm Sean Moody we take pride in our facilities and at Moody's it's what's inside that matters we believe it's more than just the exterior looking good, it's what's inside that matters. Restoring the structure of your vehicle the factory specs is critical to your safety. I'm proud of our Moody's co-worker owners who understand the importance of protecting your valuable asset. And we all know what our most valuable asset is, it's what's inside that matters. Servicing differentials is virtually impossible. The confined space makes fill holes difficult to reach, and industry standard conical bottles are rigid and hard to squeeze. That combination makes for a messy job. Plus, you can't get all of the gear lube out of the bottle, so you have to buy more than you need to complete the job. And engineering your own solution only results in disaster. Not anymore! Introducing the new Amsoil Easy Pack. Easily access hard to service differentials. Easily squeeze out all of the contents. And easily stay clean while you do it. No more leftover fluid or inconvenient rigid bottles. No more trouble reaching difficult fill holes. No more mess. Amsoil Severe Gear in the new Easy Pack. The solution to all your problems. Another first from Amsoil. For a stocking dealer nearest you, call toll-free 877-761-8375 or visit 4seasonsynthetic.com. Well, welcome back to Mainly Motorsports. And man, you don't want to spend the kind of money those guys are spending to go down there and compete in that snowball building. I couldn't even do it. That would be our whole budget in one weekend. <laughs> budget one weekend. One week, whatever. But uh, you got some big things happening really soon few weeks away from the Northeast Motorsports Expo Can't where wait. you can see the rest of the little glimpses we've shown you is a beautiful car and you guys will always have one of the best looking cars when you go to these shows thank you um, it's it's fun to be at a show isn't it support your local tracks your tour that you're running or whatever you're doing and just giving a chance to, to meet the fans on a stage where you normally can't yeah we had uh, a couple of fans of ours from uh, Wiscasset that um, her husband's got a man cave. And so they have a door panel from a year or so ago and asked me if I had anything else. I said, yeah, I got a hood because we're changing the body. And when they came here, there was nothing on this car. And that's the first time they've ever seen a car with no body. And we're like, whoa, these are pretty high tech. So it gave them a different perspective of what these things really look like, undressed, I guess yeah. you could call it. And now, obviously, when they come to the show, they're going to see it dressed back up, but they were amazed at, at just all the way the things are in these cars now versus years ago, 
and what you need for equipment and stuff to make them tick. But so it was a pretty cool little demonstration there that they had never seen. No, and I'm pretty excited about this year's show. You know, cars like this one, the crazy horse display. Beatridge always brings a couple of yep. their Pro Series guys, the Sports Series, the Wildcats. Um, the place is filling up. If you're wondering who's coming, go to the Northeast Expo, Northeast Motorsports Expo dot net website and look at the long list of people that are coming. Uh, displays, tracks, tours, vendors, and uh, we're pretty excited. Uh, last year we raffled off a crate motor. Yeah, yeah. It was a huge hit. Yeah. We're gonna do the same thing again. The Quirk, uh, the Quirk Auto Group has got behind us, and uh, you know can't thank those guys enough. Fully dressed 602 crate. I know you guys run the 604s, yep. but uh, maybe Willie will take a couple chances, even though he wants to go with the big motor. Well, we put a cam in it. Yeah, put a cam in it, right? Uh, yeah, but uh, so your chance to to win the motor, we're going to give yep. it away at Portland. But uh, you can buy your first raffle tickets up there in Augusta. Uh, some other prizes that go with it, you know, uh, with it or chance to win a drum right. of fuel and some other things. So we're excited. You know, a lot of people work hard behind the scenes to to put this show on. The awards get handed out. You know, the driver of the year's John, right. I think, got one yep. one year. The, he did. You know, it's pretty prestigious, you know, Friday night. So that it is. A lot, of, a lot of big things happening up there in Augusta. Right. And I, I got to say this, not just because you're sitting here, but you, you've done a hell of a job promoting this and growing this thing to mm -hmm. what it is right now. It is the biggest thing in New England, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, we used to do the race of Rammer years ago, and I don't think it's as big as it was no. back then, but... It's growing and growing, and the raffles and the pit stop contest, and uh, it's just a great way for people to get out there and see what's new for 2020, uh, meet some old friends, make some new friends. But the job you guys are doing with the staff that you have, it's a lot it's of work. Traditionally, the kickoff to the 2020 race season. That it is. Which we've been talking about. It never ends. You no, know, there I mean, is no. There is no off season. We, uh, the body, the body it's came kind of off like the changing of the guard. Yeah, the know? body came off us the day after the Oxford race. There is no off season, and and as you know, like you say, it's here already. It's yep. here already, folks. No, absolutely. Don't miss it. January 10th through the 12th, Augusta Civic Center. Go to northeastmotorsportsexpo.net for all the up-to-date information, who's coming, make your plans. So we'll take a break. We'll come back and wrap this week's episode up right here from John Peters World Headquarters. <laughs>